Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Polk Workbench and now the Smart Woodshop. And I've got exciting news, at least exciting news for those of you that are following along with the design and the build of the Smart Woodshop and you want me to get moving. The ultralight plywood that I've been waiting on is arriving Monday. Okay, well it's arriving at my local lumber yard on Monday, at least the tracking number says that. And I need to schedule getting it brought out to the shop. But the good news is, this coming week, I'm going to be down cutting wood and starting the actual build on the smart wood shop. Now, I still have a lot to do. I haven't been doing a lot of videos because behind the scenes, I have been just so busy getting ready for this. This is where I'm at. The design in the computer is done. I'm not going to change it anymore here. The engineering side of things and ready to go to the shop and become an artist. What I do have to do though, is I have to take this design and I have to finish up getting it in a printable version with dimensions so that I can go down and start cutting. Now, you see all these fancy colors here or ugly colors, depending on your perspective. That is just a key so that I will know what goes where. So for example, these drawer bottoms, I've got 29 drawers in the Smartwood shop. The drawer bottoms are all identical. So I made them all gray. And then the there's only two size drawers, the tall and the short. And I so I made the short ones yellow and the tall ones orange. And then the cabinets that there's only one of, like this vault here, there's only one of these, so I made it all orange, all the parts. And this vault here, uh, again, there's only one of each, well, there's two of these drawers, but I, I just left them all white in this case. So what I've done is I've gone, I've made a copy of the, of everything inside the trailer and I put it over here and I'm plucking each one off one at a time, busting them apart, laying everything out on these four by eight rectangles, which represent a full sheet of plywood. And I've color coded the plywood for now, gray for the 18 millimeter, green for the 12 millimeter, and then this purplish color for the six millimeter. And now, and I'm just breaking everything apart and laying it out, I'm not trying to do it efficient. I'm just making as many sheets of plywood as I, as I need to lay these out. Once I get everything laid out, then I will start to put the puzzle together like I did with the awesome rolling toolbox plans, you know, art plans, where I get, I'm gonna start taking plywood away by moving things in. And the beauty of this color coding is I don't need to keep all of the blue together and all of the green together. Um, I, I'm just going to put them where they fit. And then as I'm making them in the shop, I will know that I need X number of 18 and whatever. So there's one other cool thing. Once I get them all laid out, this is a SketchUp thing. So if you don't care about SketchUp, thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day. In SketchUp, um, I you can do this thing called components. And that's basically where this drawer front is the same uh, 29 times. And so rather than draw each one, they are copied. Well, once you make a copy of one, if I just copy it, uh, then it is a group and a group and a component are kind of the same thing. But if it's just a group, then if I edit one of them, I have to edit all of them. So a good example is these drawer, these are the drawer bottoms, the 29 drawer bottoms. So I've got them all one color. So I'll know that uh, I got to do this one operation 29 times. But if I come in here and I get into this and I make sure I select the whole thing, you can see that it's the only thing that you can see in the whole model. Everything else is grayed out. I hit my B key for bucket and that brings up my colors. So now if I wanted to change the color code on this or change anything about it, I'm just picking the color. So I can come in here and say, I like this green and I can click on it and you can see that all of the drawer bottoms changed. So that's how I'm going to reorganize the colors once I get it laid out. But what's really cool is you come over here to the model. Now look at these drawer bottoms. They're all green. That's what a component does for you. You need to recognize that because if you want to do a customization to one of these drawers to do it different than the rest, then you need to realize you need to take that one drawer and make it unique. And there's a way to do that. And then you can edit that one drawer. But what's cool about it is, is when you're going for uniformity, whether you're doing stair pickets or columns or anything where you've got multiples, then any little adjustment to one, it's done on all of them, saves you a ton of time.
The first thing I'm going to do is remember I've got the floor up and I'm putting that beautiful uh, non-skid from Moreland in that brown non-skid. I've, I've got all the floor up and ready to go so I'll use those as templates. That'll be a quick and easy track saw. Just make lines, cut with the track saw, drill a few holes, put them in and then caulk it in and that'll be ready to go. What I've added, what I'm going to do another remodel to the trailer before I start building the shop inside of it is I am going to insulate and line the walls. What? I said I wasn't going to do that. I need, didn't need that. It's true. But what I decided was I want to make the walls very durable. I've got that beautiful aluminum smooth and it's that orange color and I want to make it really hold up over the long haul. And I was thinking about garage doors. If you go, if you've ever seen the cheap garage doors, they've got aluminum on the outside, fairly thick, fairly durable, but then there's nothing on the inside. And so the doors get pinged up and beat up. If you look at same company making the same doors, they have a, an upgraded door where they take the same outside, the same skin, and they put insulation inside of it and then they put a vinyl backing on it. And then you can throw a basketball at the thing and it won't dent it up. So I'm going to do the same thing with my trailer. I'm going to insulate the walls with one inch rigid foam. That's because the studs are one inch. I'm going to fill it tight and then I'm going to put quarter inch plywood on the inside of the walls, on the two side walls. Now, I don't need the quarter inch and I don't need the insulation. I, you know, we just don't need insulation around there for heat or cold. And I'm not going to do the lid anyway, which is where you'd lose most of, of your uh, heat if you're trying to heat the thing. But it will just make it more durable. I don't need the plywood to hang stuff off of because all the cabinets and everything are going to hang off the studs. With one exception, the nose, the V on the nose, like I said before, I'm putting three quarter inch ultra ply, two sheets on the, on the sides of that because I will be hanging stuff directly off of the plywood there. So I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna get that done first. That should go pretty quick. And uh, then it will be dive in and start building the smart wood shop and bring you along in the entire process. It does take a little bit longer. If I were doing this trailer, just going down there and putting my head down and getting it done, I could have this thing up and ready in a week. It's, I'm guessing it's gonna take me four or five weeks because setting the camera up, changing camera angles, running multiple cameras, trying to communicate uh, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and the tools I'm using really bogs the process down. But if I don't do that, then, uh, you know, I've tried running a camera just like in the corner and then voice over later, but you miss so much. And I really want to have this be a great series that, that you can not copy the, and I don't care. I love it. It's, I, I'm honored if you build yourself a smart wood shop. But if you want to take the ideas and do your van or your box truck or your garage or your big shop, any of these ideas, I'm just hoping that you'll pick up something as well as how I use a router and templates and, and all of those kind of things. One more thing. I got a new tool last Monday. It's down in the shop. It's in the box. I'm excited to open it up, assemble it, and use it. This is going to double the functionality of the smart wood shop. It is going to make things so much more efficient. And at least I visualize that. I haven't actually used it yet, but I need to open it up. I need to assemble it and I need to try it out. And it's down there begging me to come do it, but I need to take the time to set up the camera and the audio and open it up, put it together and show you. If I don't do that, then it'll just be there in the shop. And so I'm, I'm holding back, trying to get other things done, but I'm gonna go down and make that video. So you'll get to see this exciting new tool very soon. The awesome rolling toolbox plans are right here for you to go over and purchase and download immediately, as well as the total station, the Polk workbench, and the stand-up desk. Have a great weekend and I look forward to this coming week of sharing all of the cool stuff we're going to be doing down in the shop. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.